Today I'm going to show you guys the differences between some Cry Precision combat pants. Over here on the right side, I've got some Cry Precision Army Custom or AC combat pants. In the center here, we have some Cry Precision Navy Custom or NC combat pants. And on the far left hand side, we've got some Cry Precision G3 combat pants. These are their newest current production pants. These ones have been discontinued and they no longer make these. Obviously, I'm sure they do special orders and stuff like that for uh, military organizations and such, but uh, for those of us in the civilian world, these you cannot get anymore unless you get them secondhand or find someone who bought a whole bunch and just has them sitting new in bags somewhere. I do see those pop up occasionally. Biggest thing a lot of people will notice with the cry precision pants immediately is obviously the knee pad kind of built into the pants themselves. So I'm going to start there and tell you the differences between the G3 and the AC and NC pants, okay? So biggest difference between your knee pads, obviously, the G3 or the Generation 3 pants pretty much came out at the same time as the Airflex style knee pad, which is this guy here, okay? I just don't have one in the other side on that one right now to show you. Uh, this, this pad is a lot more flexible. Um, it's a little bit thinner neoprene material than the, the Gen 2 pad here, which I'll pull out and show you. Again, these are kind of a pain to put in and take out because they're less flexible, so bear with me. All right. So the differences in the pads are thicker material around the uh, neoprene areas for the Gen 2 pad and a singular kind of hard molded uh, rubbery plastic hard shell here, okay? On the, the Airflex pads, they've got these little cuts built in, kind of a dual little imprinted design for the stitching, um, similar to what you have on the, the Gen 2 pad, but doubled up to make space for the, the flexing part here. And then you've got some cuts in the neoprene and some cuts on the side to all help with bending and flexing a little bit easier, okay? So this pad is a lot more comfy, it's a lot more practical, and it sits in the pants a lot better than the, uh, the Gen 2 pads do. Now, with that said, because these are a lot more flexible, they do tend to pop out of the, the actual pocket if you are doing something that is obviously a lot of uh, high activity, going to your knee a lot, sliding on your knees, anything like that. These tend to pop out a lot more than the Gen 2s do. And that's because, again, the Gen 2s are a lot more rigid, so they stay in the pants a little bit better. Now, one tip for you guys, if you're running Gen 3 pads or the Airflex pads and you have that problem, you can do basically, instead of this setup where you actually have the, the cry style and recommended insert, what you do is this. So you shove the whole pad inside of the pants like so, and that makes it a lot harder for it to actually pop out unintentionally. Um, and it won't, um, it won't snag on as many branches and stuff like that around here if you're going through thick bush, uh, but you still have the ability to keep the knee pad in place. So this doesn't pop out quite as much uh, if you're worried about that as this configuration does. On the G3 pants, the current production pants, if I flip this over, no pad installed on here, and you can see it's the same color backing. And the way they do that is with a little Velcro insert here that folds down and sits in here when you install the pad. On the AC pants and the NC pants, you don't have anything like that at all. Um, this is just an open area here, okay? This just opens up like so, um, right down to the stretch material, and then there's nothing separating the stretch material here from your legs. Okay, so if you're wearing NC or AC pants without pads in them, you just get this big flappy hole that opens up and, you know, collects debris and stuff. So. Not necessarily the best, but hey, if you don't like the pads, you can do it. With the G3s, works a lot better. Um, here's the little pad piece that I was telling you. So it's just a little bit with some Velcro on it here, okay? And then when you go to install the pad, basically you just take it and you fold it in like so. And then at that point, you can take your pad and install it like you normally would, okay? You can install the Gen 2 pads into the G3 pants as well if you want. They're a little tighter. The Gen 3 or the G3 pants have a slightly smaller, um, basically overall pocket size for the pants or for the pads here than the ACs and the NCs do. That kind of is pretty much everything you need to know about the knee pad pockets themselves. Um, you get a hole if you don't have any pa pads installed in the NCs and the ACs. You have a little flap to cover the hole, 
if you have G3s. All right. Now with the knee pads and everything like that out of the way, uh, I'm basically gonna go top down and explain all the differences between these pants, okay? All right guys, so the differences in the waists, we've got our G3 pants, AC pants, and NC pants here. The AC pants, the original style, Velcro and a zipper to open up the waist, okay? Close up the zipper all the way, and then you can basically pull your, um, your waist Velcro around a little bit, and that gives you about a one and a half inch um, adjustment on your waist, okay? On the NCs, Velcro, and then you've got buttons, okay? Same concept, you would do up the buttons and then you can adjust your waist in and out about one and a half inches or so. A little bit more flex, maybe about two inches on the NC pants because the button is a little bit more forgiving, okay? Moving down to the G3s, you have a Velcro and a zipper on the front, just like the ACs, but your waist adjustment is not done by just tightening up the front Velcro. I'll get to how it's done in a second, okay? Your belt loops are basically the same. They have little um, sewn-in loops below them as well for hooking on, you know, carabiners for gloves or those little uh, quick-release carabiners as well uh, for anything that you want to hook in there. I've seen guys tie paracord and, you know, chem lights and flashlights and, and anything that you want to hook in, you've got hook-in parts basically on your belt loops, okay? Um, belt loops are basically a little bit different on your G3s and NCs and ACs, okay? The AC and NCs are basically the same. You've got three at the back. On the G3s, you have four at the back, and then this is where you adjust your, your waistline on the G3s. Basically, you have these little adjusters here, which you can take and pull out and close, and you can see from here all the way back, you've got about two inches of adjustment. Typically, I find that with these adjusters, you can adjust the G3 pants about three inches, okay? So keep that in mind when you're sizing your G3 pants. You can always tighten them down with these, and they're still fairly comfortable to wear that way, okay? Uh, last thing to talk about with the waists is the cut. Um, you'll note that on the ACs, the original style, they have this big looping arced kind of back to the pants, all right? It's a huge kind of wavy loop hopefully you guys can kind of see that on camera what i'm talking about uh this wavy part here all right on the ncs you still have it but it's very minimal it's much less pronounced than on the the acs okay still a little bit of a, a high cut back there um, and then on the g3s uh it's almost a straight cut right along the back okay so highest back is going to be the ac followed by the nc followed by the g3 the g3 is almost a flat waist cut right around there okay um one thing as well on the ACs, you'll note that the, the belt loops are lower than the high back. So if you're wearing a, a battle belt or something, this is designed with padding inside of here. It's, it's the same. There's still padding on the G3 and on the NC, but the padding runs higher on the AC. So if you're wearing a higher kind of larger battle belt, you've got padding all the way around. That was the idea. Uh, the NC pants, you can see here, it doesn't come up nearly as far and the belt loops are stitched right into the top of it. Um, let's see if I can show you guys that side by side. Kind of like that so you can see there's a little bit higher on the acs okay so that's the waists and the differences there uh, all of the pants have pockets here okay uh just open style kind of slanted pockets you've got your g3s there you have your acs here right and then you've got your ncs at the back okay the differences between the nc and the g3 your ncs and the acs both have this little adjuster inside. Okay, you can see on the AC as well, right here, adjuster. And on the G3, no adjuster. I can pull the pocket right out, okay? So what's that adjuster for? That adjuster lets you adjust your knee pad ride height. So if I go in here, and we kind of set this straight out for you, I can find the stupid little adjuster in here somewhere. There it is, okay. And I pull on this and we make it tighter. You can see it's tightening up between here and here. It's bringing the knee pad higher up on the body, okay? Um, I run mine quite low. So I'm gonna lo loosen this all the way out again and kind of pull this out, all right? So it's a different style 
on the ACs and the NCs and on the G3s. With your G3s, you still have that adjuster. However, they relocated it into this front thigh pocket here, right here. So you would just pull, squeeze this down, pull on the paracord or the, the uh, zip cord or stretch cord, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, you pull on that and it pulls your knee pad up the same way as on the ACs, but it's just a different style, different materials and different kind of functionality. So, but located in basically the same place. Now, pocket layout and stretch material are gonna be the next things I cover. Pockets are generally the same. Like I said, they all have this slant pocket, okay? The G3s, NCs, ACs, they all have it. They all have a thigh pocket on the front above the knee pad. Big difference on the NCs and the ACs. You can see here. The NCs and the ACs have it stitched right along the stretch. The G3s, on the other hand, actually raise that pocket up above the stretch. They all have a cargo pocket to the outside of the front thigh pocket, the NCs as well, and the G3s. Difference on the G3s, however, is there's no gap between them. The outside cargo pocket is built in, uh, not built in, but it's basically built right up against the front thigh pocket, whereas on the NCs, you can see there's this gap here about you know a half inch to about one and a half inch gap between, and same thing on the ACs. Moving down below that, at the very bottom here, you basically have a calf pocket on each pant, okay? The AC and the NC and the G3 all have one. And they're basically located in the same position still. Um, there's really no difference. The, um, the G3 one is a little bit higher and a little bit more off to the side than it is on the AC and the NC, but they're about the same size and they do the same, same thing, same purpose, okay? So they all have those pockets for the most part, okay? Um, obviously there are custom pants out there that have been modified a little bit differently. Um, some of the common ones are slap charge pouches instead of these little calf pouches on the bottom. Um, some guys seem to have gotten those issued. You're going to see those more in AOR1 and AOR2 uh, and a couple of multicam variants, but not really in anything else, all right? And basically for rear pockets, they all have some as well. Um, the NC and the AC are the same. Little Velcro clasp here, opens them up, goes in, okay, just like so. And you can see it's about four of my fingers width, okay. G3's, a little bit better of a design. You get a zipper, okay, and I can put my whole hand in. So it's a little bit wider, it's a little bit deeper as well, okay. So larger pocket on the, the rear of the AC's, or the G3's, sorry. Larger pocket on the G3's, the NC's and the AC's are the same. Uh, differences on the pockets on the NCs and the ACs. This is one of the main differences. Um, the NCs have a combination of buttons. So two buttons on either side and then a Velcro closure on the inside there and that opens up just like that, okay? On the ACs, it's just two Velcro tabs and then they open up on the cargo pockets. That brings us to stretch material. Obviously they all have stretch material around and behind the knee, okay? On the G3s, however, what they did is they double stitched along the stretch material everywhere. So you've got double stitching, double stitching around the knee pad, double stitching here. There is double stitching all the way up the side, double stitching along the top, and double stitching on the inside here. You just can't see it because it's a uh, an internal seam, okay? Um, on the NCs and the ACs, not as much double stitching, so they do tend to tear more around the stretch. You have double stitching around the knee pad pocket, but you only have single stitching here. I believe it is double stitching along the side, single stitching along the top again, and this is part of the reason they moved these uh, thigh front pockets up on the G3s, was so they could double stitch this without sacrificing any pocket space on that thigh pocket. And apparently, these were blowing out the bottom of the thigh pockets whenever this ripped, so that made the pocket useless. So moving it up on the G3s was a, a good call in my mind. Uh, moving on to this side here, you can see it's single stitching, like I said, all the way across the top, but it is double stitching down this side, okay? So there's more double stitching on the G3 than there is on the AC or the, uh, the NC. The crotches, or the crotch area, you can see here on the AC, and the crotch area on the NCs are the same, meaning there is no stretch in there at all, okay? Now, 
that did cause some blowouts um, for guys who actually got issued these and used them overseas. There was definitely blowouts around the crotches. I've read lots of reports on that. So in the G3s, Cry added stretch material into the crotch, okay? So you can squat and you know do the splits as much as you want in these kind of pants. And for the most part, they hold together pretty well. Um, the only downside is there is no double stitching on the crotch stretch, okay? Um, it's just single stitching, I believe, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I just double checked. It's basically single stitching, uh, but then they have a, a kind of a reinforcement stitch on the inside, but it's not as reinforced as the knees. So um, the crotches have been known to blow out on the G3s every now and then as well, um, especially the woodland pants. If you ever get woodland G3s, um, some of them didn't even have stretch, but they had G3 everything else, just no stretch. Those crotches blew out all the time. I've read that some of the first batch with stretch also blew out because they didn't reinforce it properly, but it looks like on these AOR1s, they are reinforced properly. Basically, you can see what I mean here. So there's a single stitch, and then there's kind of this reinforced kind of railroad stitch as well. Um, whereas these have a railroad stitch and double stitching. So the knee pads are a lot more reinforced. Um, they do also all have stretch on the back, just below the belt line. Okay, so basically there on the ACs as well and on the NCs as well. All right, my NCs are really pilling. Again, they were used a lot. Colors, uh, most people think that there's only one tan color of stretch. Obviously there are two, okay? The AOR1 pants and some of the custom pants out there um, have the, the browner material in them, okay? Um, the ACs have this tanner material, all right? It's more of a coyote tan. Um, or I guess kind of a um, khaki tan, I guess. And it's more of a coyote brown on the AOR ones. So those are the main differences between the G3 pants and the NCs and the ACs. Big difference between these two is just how the pockets and such close and the zipper at the front. You get a zipper on the ACs and you get buttons on the NCs, okay? Those are pretty much the only differences. The G3, there's a lot more differences as well, okay? Um, They've even added some things on the G3 as well. Now that I've gone over the differences, we'll talk about the additions, okay? So the additions on the G3, above your cargo pocket here on the side, it's kind of hard to show this with the knee pad in, so maybe I'll just be smart and do it on this side without the knee pad. Your cargo pocket, okay, has this little opening at the top, which is fantastic to stick a knife in. Um, you can have a knife going in there and this passes all the way through right inside to here, okay? So if you've got something longer, like a flashlight or something, like a long flashlight that'll still clear, you could shove the handle in there and have the head sticking out and it'll go all the way into your cargo pocket and you can just pull it out the top. Or again, if you have a little folder knife or something like that, you can clip it in there or a uh, small surefire, uh, pens, pencils with clips, anything will clip on there, okay? On the inside of the, uh, the G3 pants, what they have is they've sewn in this little um, elastic piece so you can put like a water bottle or something in there and what it does is it holds it towards kind of like the uh, the center of the pouch all right um, so it just kind of keeps it centered doesn't roll around doesn't fall sideways so that's kind of nice as well okay those are the big additions on the g3 plus obviously the the stretch on the crotch and that's pretty much everything so if you guys have any questions or anything like that let me know okay uh, I'd be free to answer any questions you guys may have about the Cry Precision pants. And stay tuned because we are going to do a more in-depth, detailed comparison to real Cry Precision G3 pants and some of the knockoffs on the market. So uh, we're going to try and get our hands on some Emersons, some Flash Force Industries, some Samapo, and some Combat Shields. And we're going to kind of do a little review on the differences between them, stitching quality, overall fabric quality, etc. So keep an eye out for that video as well for those of you who don't necessarily need the real Cry Precision pants, okay? Um, obviously these were all real examples here today, but there are definitely some decent reproductions out there for those of you who do not have, you know, $220 or so to spend on a pair of these uh, in USD, alright? 
anyone out there who wants something like this for hiking or airsoft or paintball or they're just you know kind of a general outdoorsy person and want some some decent high quality pants with knee pads built in um, some of those rough reduction pants are definitely the way to go um, without having to spend you know several hundred dollars on cry precision stuff all right so thank you guys all for watching. Like I said, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you. If you guys want to see anything else specific on gear, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.